All right, YouTube, time for occult literature, video number 46, The Art of Drawing Spirits into Crystals by Trithemius. Uh, this is an interesting work. It's rather short. It's 24 pages, but it's actually a grimoire. Now, this is uh, apart from the, the steganography, which is kind of a grimoire, but it's also an example of hidden writing. In this particular work, though, it's being so literal and explicit in the, in the practice of draw, literally drawing spirits into a special sort of polished rock that there's really no way to construe it as hidden writing. I have to assume that it's meant to be taken literally. Now, as always, link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon, second link to the books blog, where you can find this and many other works available. There are links on the left-hand side to navigate to the lists of edited works according to their four categories, you know, folk, magic, spiritual works, alchemy, and then grimoires. I classed this as a grimoire because it's too literal for me to class as sort of a, a general spiritual text, as an example of hidden writing as we might find in Trithemius' other work. Um, it's, it's also not like De Septum Secundis, or Secundaeus, depending on which edition. It's spelled differently, I'm not exactly sure why, uh, in which it's sort of, it's a prophetic material, but it also has a little bit of a veiled meaning. This doesn't appear to have that unless he's trying to teach people math, because quite literally all it is is the days of the week, the different hours of the day and night, which angel rules over them, of the seven angels, you know, Gabriel and, and, and Michael and so forth, Samuel, Sashiel. And uh, paired with this is essentially a simplistic practice where you're creating a sort of wooden stand with sort of a metal headpiece uh, of sorts. And there's a polished rock. It has to be made to specifications. It's put in this sort of little pedestal and the pentagram is drawn, and you're literally summoning sort of these, uh, these cosmic forces through that. You're actually you're summoning demons in order to sort of uh, subjugate them to the angel and, and do various things. Rather short work. It doesn't go into that much detail about specifically what you can do with these captured sort of celestial or demonic or angelic spirits, as the case may be. But it goes into quite a bit of categorization according to the hours of the day, and it's literally just a repeating list of these same seven names over and over, day and night, according to the 24 hours of the day. <clears throat> and paired with this, of course, it's quite elaborate high ritual magic. Now, some people have said, oh, well, some of these works aren't very long. Well, you've got to realize these were written back, in some cases, the texts that I'm editing were made before the printing press was developed. It makes sense that they would be conserving their time and space and paper. And in some of the illuminated manuscripts, you only have a paragraph on the page. The rest is all artwork. Even when we're talking about Renaissance era works, because of the price of paper and ink being what it was, because of the time and labor with an old manual printing press still being, compared to the modern age, relatively high, the works tend to be a little bit on the shorter side. That being said, this is probably his best work. It's actually, uh, I, I like this and De Septum Secundis both better than the Steganographia or his steganography, his hidden writing, which is sort of a cryptic work in which, uh, that's the one he's best known for, in which it's essentially in the form of a, a rather long, in that case, grimoire, but at the same time it's got hidden meanings, it's sort of teaching uh, about uh, the art of, of literally veiling your message behind sort of the, the angels and demons sort of references in various ways. Uh, this is probably a, a more literal work. I have to assume, while we may regard some of these figures because they used hidden writing, or they used, they veiled sort of a secular or anti-religious or philosophical message behind sort of the praise Jesus stuff, or, or the here are the demons of the days of the week stuff, that doesn't mean they can't also have been believers in the more literal occult that we would tend to regard today. I think that's the case with Trithemius. Um, it's probably it's the case with Agrippa. It's the case with many of these figures. Of course, they believed in them. Everybody at those times believed in supernatural forces, as we would term them. It's just a case of they didn't necessarily just ruminate on that one topic, which makes sense. <clears throat> you look at my work. 
I'll take it as a crude example, not comparing myself to Agrippa or Trithemius. But at the same time, what do I do? I talk about the, the paranormal, the cryptids, the, the literal occultism, the demons, and so forth. But at the same time, I also talk about secular issues. It's exactly the same hundreds of years ago. There's no reason to believe that these people were sort of easily lumped into some stereotypical category where they either just focused on unicorns and dragons, or they just veiled everything and talked about secular philosophy and wrapped it up in spiritual language. So again, a link in the description to where you can purchase my edition of this relatively short but very interesting work. It is a grimoire. It is a literal summoning guide. It's, it should be taken, at least if you take these sorts of things seriously at all, it should be taken quite literally. Uh, second link to the book's blog where other materials as well are available. That's about all. Peace out.